Especially when you have a lot of fonts installed, it's very easy to forget what some of them actually look like. So today we're looking at a very simple script called Font Preview, which basically lets you look at what those fonts look like with a various array of symbols. So if we just run this with no argument, what it's going to do is open up FZF with a list of every font we have installed on our system. Now, this isn't just for system fonts, it will also include user fonts as well. So let's search for something like, say, Bevas. New Air Bold. So this is the font that I'm using on my thumbnails. Now this one I don't have installed as a system font. I've actually got this one located inside of my uh, .local directory. So go down to that one in my share and then inside of the fonts directory, as we can see, this one right here. Being FCF, we don't just have to search for something. We can also use our arrow keys if we'd like. So let's bring up something like Helvetica. Now, you don't actually have to close this window when you switch to a different font. It'll automatically be closed for you. So let's say we switch over to something like, I don't know, times bold. As we can see, it gets rid of that window for us and replaces it with the new preview. The window being used for the image is SXIV, which sadly can't be configured. So if you're using something like Fair or other sort of image viewing programs, you can't use those. It requires you to use SXIV. But since this is just a bash script, it isn't really that difficult to go and change if you want to go and modify the script yourself. Now let's quit out of this and if you know exactly what font you're going to use, also it might complain that you're using an obsolete version of SXIV even when you have the latest version installed. I don't know why it does that. I'm guessing that this message is just for whenever there is some sort of error regardless of what the error actually is. But anyway, if you know exactly what font you want to preview, what you can do is run font preview dash i, so that is the input file, and then pass in the path to the font you want to preview. So in this case, we're going to use that Bevas font again, so that's located in my share folder, in my fonts folder, and this one right here, we'll use just the first one. And then what we need to do is set the output file name, so in this case, we'll just call it text.png. And then if we just open up that image, so text.png, as we can see, we have that preview generated. I would have liked to see it automatically open up SXIV if you did run it like this, but even if you run it without the output file name, it still won't do it. So if you do it like this, it's just going to try to use the default name, but I've noticed that the default name isn't actually set right now. So as we can see, it's supposed to be input.png, but there's nothing actually here. So what you could do instead, I guess, is just generate the file and then run SXIV afterwards with whatever the file name actually is. So in this case, you could use something like Fair or some other sort of image preview, but it's not really that big of a deal, I guess. Personally, I'm probably just going to use it with the fuzzy finding mode anyway. You can change the default preview text with the dash dash preview dash text option. And one reason why you might want to do this is because the default preview text is quite English centric. So if you want to test out a font for another language, you can't really do it properly with English symbols. So let's say you want to test out something like IPA Gothic, which is a Japanese font. Obviously, those symbols are going to still be in the font. However, you're probably not going to be using it like this in most instances. So normally, you'd actually want to have something actually in that language. So for example, something like this right here. So I'm going to paste it in because I don't actually have a uh, way to type Japanese symbols on this computer. So let's go back to IPA Gothic now. And as we can see, that will then print out those symbols. Now, obviously, if you're using another language font and you try to use it for something like Courier, it probably won't have the symbols for that language. And the same is going to be true if you try to preview something like nerd font symbols. So let's bring this back open again and paste this one in right here. So this is just the uh, little git icon from nerd font. And if we try to run this on, I don't know, Courier. Courier isn't going to actually have a symbol for that. But then if we try that on something like Fira Code, as we can see, that symbol gets rendered properly. This may also be useful if, say, you're developing a website and you want to see what the title will look like in various sorts of fonts. So let's say that we have a website called The Best Shop or something like that. Not bet, best. Cool. And then we can obviously preview this in various sorts of fonts. But if you want to preview it for something like that, you probably want the background and the foreground color to actually match what the website actually looks like. So we can go and set both those values with dash dash bg dash color or dash dash fg dash color for the foreground. And what we can do in here is use any format supported in image magic. So that's how it's actually generating the image. So we can use a color name. We can use a hex value. So we can use something like, I don't know, ff 
0,0FF, or we could use a gray value. So that is a value between 0 and 255, or we can use an RGB value. So that'll be like RGB, and then a value, another value, another value. So red, green, blue. We can use a HSB value. So that is hue, saturation, brightness. That takes in a value here. It takes in a percentage of some sort, and then it takes in another percentage. We can use HSL, which is hue, saturation, lightness, takes in the exact same values, or we can use the lab format and various other formats supported inside of Image Magic. If you want to go see a full list of them, I might leave a link down below to the Image Magic documentation. You can also set the font size with the dash dash font dash size argument. And let's say we set the font size to be 75. So that I believe is going to be 75 point. So let's go and look at, say, this one right here. As we can see, that's what it's going to look like now. So this makes it so it's a little bit easier to see what the font will look like in a more realistic use case. You can set the size of the font preview window with the dash dash size argument. However, there's no indication in the documentation of how this actually works. So I've tried various sorts of formats and none of them seem to be working like at all. So I've tried 500 by 500. I've tried 500 colon 500. There's no indication in the documentation of how to actually get this to work. So if someone happens to know, then feel free to let me know. But I think that's something that probably should be documented, especially when it's not anything simple like this. But one that does work is the font preview position. So this is the position of the actual window itself, not the text inside of the font preview window. Sadly, that would actually be really useful and I would actually like to see it in a future version. So let's say plus 50, plus 200. And if we run that like that now, as we can see, it doesn't really make any difference because I'm in a tiling window manager. Now, if I was in, say, a floating window manager, you would actually see a difference there. But as I said, I would like to see that actually modify where the text is located rather than modifying how the window actually gets spawned. Now, if you want any of these to be a bit more of a permanent set, there are some environment variables you can go modify as well. So I'm going to go into my ZSH emp file. If you're on bash, obviously use your bash profile. So the first one that we have is this one right here for the window size. Now, as we can see, the window size is set in this format here. So that's why that was the first one I tried. But as we saw before, it doesn't really make any difference. That argument still doesn't work. So another one we have is the position. So this is obviously the one that we just tried, the position of the actual window itself. So let's say, I don't know, plus 200. And then we could do something like minus 10 or something like that. So that means plus 200 on the X and minus 10 on the Y. We have a font size command as well. So that would be in this form right here. So font preview underscore font underscore size. We have a background color as well. So that'll be this one right here. So font preview underscore BG underscore color. And likewise, we have a foreground color as well. If you want to go and set the foreground color. So let's go and actually change these. Let's say we want this to be, I don't know, red. And we'll leave this one as black, I guess. And we can also go and set what the default preview text is as well. So in this case, the default is something like this. Now, as we can see, it uses backslash n to actually have a new line in there. So let's say that we want to have, I don't know, all of this to be G's for whatever reason. Wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it if you want. And maybe there's some extra symbols you want to preview as well. So say, I don't know, these symbols here or something like that. I don't know. Whatever it is you want to preview. So if we go and save this now, and then I go and resource my ZSH emp and we rerun font preview. This time we'll run it without any of the arguments. I guess I should just write out the command. It would be easier. And then let's say we look at this one here. As we can see, we have this big line of Gs. We have our extra symbols and the background font is now set to red. So one productive use of setting the preview text like this is let's say you don't write any English and you use some other language, whatever the language is, doesn't really matter. So in this case, what you could do is set the default text to be in that language so you can actually test out those fonts without really having to go and set it every single time you want to set it. And then if you want to go and test an English font, then you can set it in that case. One issue this does have, which I didn't mention earlier, is it's not really a big fan of working with color emojis. So if we go set that as our preview text, so uh, this bit of text right here. So it's just a line of emoji, nothing really too special. So if we go and run it like this and bring up some font that doesn't have those emojis in it, as you can see, it doesn't show anything. But even if we go open up a font where it is actually supported, so for example, Noto Color Emoji, 
we don't actually get any output in here. And this is one of the big reasons why I might actually want to use this because I might want to see what the emoji look like in various sorts of fonts. Now, if we quit out of this, it's going to claim that there's a problem with SXIV. However, that doesn't actually make any sense because by the time it gets to SXIV, it's already going to be an image. So it has to be a problem at some earlier point in the pipeline. But it's kind of expected because wider characters inside of Unicode are known to be an issue in a lot of cases and typically emoji are the most obvious place where this problem actually crops up. Now if you do want to use this and you're on Arch Linux, it is available in the AUR but if you want to go and modify the script for yourself, it's probably better to go and download it from the GitHub page. But if you're going to download it like that, you need to make sure you have the dependencies installed. So you need to have XDO tool. That's how it's actually closing the SXIV window and opening up the new one. You need FZF and that's how it's actually doing the fuzzy finding. You need image magic to actually generate the image and SXIV to actually display the image itself. Now, even with those slight emoji issues, this is still a really, really useful tool, even if you just want to integrate it into something like VIFM to actually preview font, which is how a couple of the VIFM image plugins actually work. So I think that's pretty much everything for this application. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Peter, Lee, Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, BitTube, and BitShoot if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.